welcome back, Alex Goldman and Josh Bizar today. Joined very luckily by a regular of the show and a man that we always love to talk to, Tom Nolan. Tom, how you doing today, brother? I'm good, man. Thank you very much for having me on, boys. No, of course. So, look, man, I want to get like straight into it. And the first question I have is, you know, after the last fight, you know, did you have any experience with any people, whether you know teammates, friends, even just casual fans? switch up on you a little bit or change their tune, you know, after the loss, you know, this is something we see a lot with champions or, you know, other fighters in the UFC that when they hit a bump in the road, a lot of people kind of, you know, write them off or start acting a little bit differently. Did you experience any of that? Um, so yeah. So some of the casual fan base, obviously I wouldn't say switched up cause they might not have seen me. Well, they probably haven't seen me fight before. Mm. Um, but in terms of my circle, I've got a pretty small circle. So everyone around me is, you know, supportive all the way through and through. So it wasn't too bad, to be honest, man. I just, I don't read comments. So it was, yeah, it's, 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 it's all right. Yeah. Um, Tommy, obviously it's a big, big thing making your debut. And I guess you're, you're a guy that I think always looks very calm, um, in the octagon you always have in, you know, all your time in eternal and even, even, you know, making that walk against, against Marty, you still look calm. Did you experience jitters and first time debut jitters and that, those sort of things, or was it was it relatively just the same as every other fight? Um, because I guess a lot of a lot of it goes into it. There's a lot of media throughout that that week that you have to do, and it's and it's a lot different to any other fight that you would have experienced. So, did, did you did you kind of experience any of that? Um, no, I wouldn't say I had any jitters. To be honest, I think that's probably what played a part in what went wrong. I think I was too comfortable. You know what I mean? I was so excited. Yeah. So red hot roaring to go. I was just, I, yeah. you know, I couldn't be happier to be there, you know. But um, I think I need to bring back that element a little bit more, you know. Remind myself that hey, like these guys are all dangerous now in the, you know, the UFC. That's all the yeah. best. In the world. So yeah, I think having those jitters will be a good thing. Yeah. Mm. Speaking on that comfortability, Tom, you know, I'm wondering, has there been any sort of relief, uh, you know, relief or almost a release of pressure now that? you know, that first loss has happened because, you know, fighters such as Sean Brady and so many others have spoken that in a way sort of having that first loss allows them to be freer in the cage, allows them to focus more on, you know, utilizing their skill set, you know, as opposed to, you know, maybe thinking in the back of their head, I need to remain undefeated. Has Have you experienced any of that? Well, to be honest, I've, I've never really given much um, thought about being undefeated and stuff. Like I, it never really bothered me. Like, I went through this as an amateur, right? Like I got to seven and zero as an amateur before I lost. And back then, I was I was a young kid, and I cared about that a lot. And then going into my pro career, I decided like, hey, like you can lose any of these fights, you can't put any stock in that. And like that is the way I fight, right? Like it's live by the sword, die by the sword. I knew you can ask anyone around me. I've talked about this day would come, you know, like. When you're stepping in there and fighting the way I am, it gets you to the UFC at five and zero. But it also puts you in positions where, if you're fighting a power puncher, sometimes you're, you know, you're the nail. Sometimes you have to go down. Um, it's taught me some good lessons, you know, like maybe being more patient. Like I just said before, I was so excited. I felt so comfortable. I felt too comfortable. I was, I was like, oh man, I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. And you know, to be honest, looking over at Motor in the cage, I could tell he was, he was very, very nervous at the time. And that gave me too much confidence. Like I was so excited by that moment. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've learned a lot of things from that. I've taken that away and I'm excited to show it again when I'm stepping in there in nine weeks time. What's up guys, it's, uh, it's Josh here from The Stands. And look, I know you're in the middle uh, of a good little interview that we're currently doing, but I wanna take a second of your time just to give a quick little shout out to today's sponsor, uh, Train Aid. Obviously they're, uh, they're big supporters of us like we are. Um, of them and today they're uh, they're sponsoring this video um, and look I want to I want to let you guys know about a little product they do their, their premium product train out hydration um, it's the best hydration formula on the market guys I'm not gonna not gonna lie to you and look if you don't believe me ask guys like Israel Adesanya Alexander Volkanovsky Leon Edwards you ever heard of these guys I mean they're the top athletes in the world uh, and they're all taking train out hydration um, it really is the number one formula um, in the world for hydration. And in, in the summer months here in Australia, I mean, it's something that uh, I think everyone should be taking. Um, and Trainade have, uh, have been very nice uh, to give us a discount code, a very healthy di discount code as well. I mean, it's a nice little discount code. If you use the code FTS15 at the checkout, um, they will give you 15% off. Um, we'll leave a link um, to their website in, in this uh, description of this video. And uh, yeah, check them out, guys. Please support them. Uh, because they are supporting us. Cheers. Absolutely, man. Um, and I guess sort of I just want to touch on that as well is the the learning experience 
of it, um, I think is a big, big factor. Um, and I think we'll definitely see a different version of you next time around. I, I do think that is a, is a big thing with guys and, and losses. I think sometimes they're the most important things possible. I think, you know, take, take a guy for Benoit St. Denis on the weekend comes in there, red roar and first round, you know, looks, looks the guns, second round looks the guns, gets knocked out. But I think he's a young guy too. He, he will learn so much from that as well, as I think you will from that first loss. Um, what would be some main key points that you sort of took away from that fight and thought, okay, I've learned what, you know, this is the main things that, that I've learned um, from this fight. Um, well, with that fight, right. Like, obviously, like I said it from the start, if, if motor touches me, I'm going to know about it. Right. Like he hits hard. Um, I felt like oh, I had the momentum. Like I know it was only a short fight, but like I was landing, I landed a really good teep to the body and I heard him let out a lot of air and I was like, all right, I've got you. I've got, I've, I've figured him out. Uh, I, was, I was cutting that leg on the inside. I was touching the jab, touching the jab. And um, I, I probably should have fainted when I did go, but I was, I was a little bit hesitating and I was like, oh, I'm going to go. And then obviously I got caught. Um, yep. Yeah, going into the next one, I'm going to have a lot more patience for sure. I'm still going to have that killer style. Like, um, you know, that's what got me here. That's what's going to get me to where I'm going. I know my potential. I know I'm definitely going to be a world champion in this sport. I don't care what anyone says. You know, you can have your opinion, but I know where I'm going. And I know that that's what's got me to where I am. So now it's, I've just got to remind myself, you know, like I believe with, with my attributes of my length and my creativity, you know, my striking is some of the best you'll come across. Um, so I don't really need to put myself in the fire as often as I have been. Um, but again, right, if I had gone out there and that my shot had landed when Motors did and he had gone, then I would have just kept going, kept going, and, kept, and then I could have been, um, you know, Benoit St. Denise, I could have been in that position. And now it's like he has to learn the same thing I'm learning now. Mm. From fight. It's like yeah. I'd rather learn it now. If I had to pick between me and him when to learn it, I think now is a better time for me to learn it. So now I can carry that into my next fights, you know. So, again, I'm a sniper from long range. I've got a cardio. I've got, I've got some great cardio for days. So it's like I'm, I'm going to sit on the outside, pick my shots better, and then, um, yeah, when I see that shot, I'll take it and I'll, I'll, I can put people to sleep with any any limb on my body. So now it's about trusting that and not just forcing it. Yep. For sure. And, you know, you talk about learning these lessons now, and that kind of, you know, leads into my next question, which is at this stage of, you know, your journey as a martial artist, are you more focused on looking at what your peers are doing and, you know, taking inspiration or taking the good things that they're doing from them? Or are you really focusing on developing your own style, your own techniques, your own way of doing things as it were in the cage? Yeah. So I try to take a little bit from everyone, right? Like, I feel like it's almost impossible to just come up with your own style. You have to be influenced from something, right? So, like, I love I love watching Corey Sandhagen. I watch him all the time. You know, Sean O'Malley, these long strikers. But also, I'll, I do my, my study on all my grapplers and my wrestling, and I'm, I'm always making sure my game's well-rounded, right? Like, I haven't had to use that part of my game pretty much for my entire pro career, but it's there and it's always being developed. Even if, you know, I, I much prefer the striking, it's definitely my element, but... I make sure I'm doing all of it. So, yeah, I like to say that I, uh, I I take a little piece from everyone that I need. And then, you know, with Steve, I'm a head coach. He gets my style, makes sure I'm sitting down properly on my shots. Like, before going to him, I always had this style, but I didn't have this power and this confidence. And now it's like, now I've got to, I've got to just pick those shots better. So we're working on that. We're, we're uh, yeah, you'll, you'll see in the next one for sure. Absolutely. Well, it's a good transition. Let's talk about it. Victor Martinez, May 18th, man. I guess when I spoke to Elliot, um, a few days after the, your fight, he was saying how, you know, you were trying to get a fight on the way, on the way back on the plane. You were, you were that keen for a fight. So obviously a quick, a quick enough turnaround, which is, um, which is good for you, I guess. Um, you mentioned to me the other day that, it, that this fight will be time for redemption. And I guess it's a, it's, it's a big thing that, you know, you get to show so quickly as well um, because people will quickly forget, you know, you, you go out there and you put away Victor Martinez in, uh, in quick fashion. No one's going to remember the fight in January and it's going to be a long distant memory. How does this fight play out with Victor um, on on May 18th? Yeah, so uh, I think Victor is pretty similar to my last opponent in terms of, you know, he's got a lot of power in his hands. Um, he's a little bit more of a plotty style, very similar to the last guy. Uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu, you know, he's, he's got a lot of skills. Um, similar situation to me in terms of the UFC. He had a contender's win and then lost his debut in the UFC. So it's it's a good matchmaking in that sense. Um, yeah. To be honest, I'm not putting a lot of stock in my prediction for this one because for the last one, I think 
I studied my opponent so much. I studied him too much where I was, you know, if Moda does this, I've got an answer here. If you do I've got an answer here. And it's like, hey, I'm, I've never really done that before. And, um, you know, I've just got to do it for myself. So all I can say is the best version of me is going to show up. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be long. I'm going to be dangerous. I'm going to be there looking to hurt, you know, bad intentions. Um, whether it's the first round, second round or third round, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm, all that's off my shoulders now. It doesn't, I'm not looking for the first round finish. And I'm, I'm happy to make it drag out to the third. I'm happy. I don't care if it goes a distance. All I want to do is just, you know, show the world what I can do. So I think, yeah, it's, it's one of the three rounds he's going he's gonna to fall for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Tom, you know, last couple of questions from us, you know, we really appreciate your time. You know, last one for me anyways, you know, Looking at Team Compton, obviously, you know, anyone who's anyone that's a fan of Australian MMA, you know, we know your main names from that, you know, yourself, Dom Marfan. But I'm wondering, you know, can you speak to any new fighters that have, you know, been coming up in the last year or so from Team Compton that you think can really make an impact in this sport? Man, Blair Britag, he's fighting um, this weekend on Eternal. Mm. Bro, watch him. He is elite, right? Mm. Like, he, he's definitely going to make some waves. And uh, another guy actually making his pro debut so he'll be less familiar, but Ethan uh, Mitchell. Yeah, I've seen him. But yeah, Ethan Mitchell, man, he, again, just elite. These two dudes are going to put on a show. They're, they're really high level. Um, awesome. You know, there's, there, there are a heap in the team. I, I could sit here and rattle them all off, but yeah. those guys are fighting this weekend, and, yeah, their camps have been unreal, so it's hard not to say them. Absolutely. Well, last one, man. Um, there was one name there that I wanted to touch on uh, was Don Marfan. He had a – I think he had a fantastic first round against Quinlan Southfield. Um, for his title fight, I was blown away by how dominant he was. Ultimately, didn't didn't go his way um, in the end, and I guess that's the sport, isn't it? I mean, it's 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 kill or be killed, and and that's sort of what happens. Sometimes you're the hammer, and sometimes you are the nail. Yep. What was that process like? Because I think a title shot there, and maybe winning that title puts him in probably good stead for the UFC. Not that it doesn't now, but maybe just fast tracks it a little bit. Um, how has he been um, since that fight and, and and where do you think this year will take him? Yeah, man, like, um, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow. Like, losing the same guy a couple of times is not easy, but, you know, he's resilient and he's just doing what, what anyone can do, right? Like, you can either give up and sulk about it or you get back to the gym and you get better, you know? So he's yeah. been you know, in the gym grinding away and I think big things are to come for him. So, you know, like, he's, he's, an, he's a killer. He's an absolute animal. He's got the right mindset, so... Yeah, few adjustments, and uh, he'll be right back in that position. Awesome, Tommy. It's always a uh, always a pleasure, man. We always appreciate your support of us as well. Uh, it doesn't go unnoticed, and it is uh, sincerely appreciated, mate. Um, May eighteenth, we both can't look. We both look forward to it. We can't wait to see you back in, man. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you this weekend. Are you going to Eternal this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. All right, we'll catch you there. Um, and uh, yeah, man. We'll uh, very much looking forward to it, brother. Can't wait. That's really appreciate it. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Thank you.